I've got a special guest coming in. As you know, in 2004, I was on a show called The Gadget Show. Uh, we started it off and I did it for eight years, 16 series, three years of Gadget Show Live. It was an awful lot of fun. And we are hoping... It's all for you. There is! Good to see you. Good morning. Do you like the music? I think we're playing you some intro. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best music, wasn't it? Back in the day. <laughs> well, you knew what it meant. What? Well, it meant it meant you know silliness and 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 oh. laughter and, and all sorts of crazy shit. And it's still going on, isn't it? It's still. Are you wearing a hat? It's a nice hat you've got. Yes. On. Right. Yes. It was. It's, it's a. Sticking. It's a baseball cap. I've turned. I've turned it backwards. Um, because I haven't shaved or cut my hair since entering um, quarantine. I've entered a, a well, I've initiated a challenge with some friends of mine uh, to keep growing the hair on the face and the top of the head to see uh, which of our uncles from the 70s we end up looking like by the end of uh, <laughs> isolation. I think I might look like my uncle from the 70s by the end of lockdown as well. <laughs> I can't get any work done Billy Ocean, is that good? Yeah, I'll take that. I'll yeah. take that. We love Billy yeah. Ocean. The dreads. Yes, we do. Yes, we um, do. Yeah, yeah. I've got no chance of growing any dreads unless I just grow them from the side of my head. Yeah, that might be a bit weird. But funny. yeah. Uh, talking of funny, first of all, it's absolutely delightful to see you. Thank you for joining Likewise. us on Susan's Breakfast Club, our made-up show. <laughs> but it's a chat and it's turning into a show. Well, do you know what it's like? Um, Brilliant. So uh, you look very well. I know it was your daughter's birthday, Phoenix's birthday yesterday, and you've got two kids. How yeah. is lockdown for you? Uh, so far, so good. We've had um, some really good weather uh, the last two and a half, three weeks, and that just makes... It makes it easier. Uh, we moved out of London eight years ago because we couldn't afford a, a house. Uh, and where we live now, we've got a house and a, a garden. And uh, the garden has been an absolute godsend to help the kids burn off a little energy. Um, every three, once every three, four days, we venture out the front door um, and go for a walk. So far, um, both kids are, you know, they're doing, they're doing great. I mean, the bonus for them is they've got, they've got mummy and daddy 24 seven. They're not at that age yet where they don't want to, they don't want to be with their parents because they're so uncool. So at the moment we're, we're really enjoying it. They're always going to want to be with you. You and Rachel are so cool. You're uber cool. Uh, um, <laughs> it really doesn't matter bundle what. Going on. There's a cat bundle behind. Uh, thanks for picking that up. Right. So I've got some questions from people. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I am ready. But am I allowed to ask you questions as well? Because I Do know you've you been... Do what you want. It's Thursday. <laughs> Come on. I'm excited to talk to you. Um, Carl Whitehouse wants to know if there was any gadget that you bought personally. And I, I can, from my side, I'm going to say not... Um, I think we stole most of them. I mean, just let's just put it out there. We did pinch quite a few, didn't we? And it was a bit of a bundle to get them before the producers got them. Um, well, but, uh, you, you, Jason, you, Jason, and Ewan um, tea leafed a lot of tech. I mean, what was left for us underlings and production crew was, you know, wasn't even worth trying to sell on on eBay. Um, so. No, during our time together, I, re I really, honestly, didn't get my hands on much. Um, now that you've gone, Listen, well. It... <laughs> it's not me that used to take everything. We know who used to take everything. I did get given a few things. In fact, the, my love is photography. So um, yeah. I, used, I did used to go out and buy the cameras that, um, well, J John actually would recommend a lot of um, photography stuff. Uh, but I love taking pictures, so so cameras were, were my thing. I, and obviously didn't get to see any cameras, sadly. Uh, but uh, Chris I Ash still think, I still think the best thing you were given was um, was a MacBook, because still to this day, we know that Apple, they just don't give anything away. They don't, you know, to, to PR, to, to, um, to influencers and, and whatnot. It's really difficult to get tech out of them to keep as your own and flipping Susie Perry here was was given a MacBook some years ago and you couldn't beg steal or borrow from him <laughs> you've got over it though yeah 
No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Glyn Davis would like to know uh, one of of the gadgets that failed to do uh, what it. What were the gadgets that failed to do what they were supposed to do? And I would probably say about seventy percent of the stuff that we tested. Yeah, yeah, Glyn. I mean, the way the way it works is um, since we started uh, working on the gadget show, the the sentence or the saying "never work with children or animals" was extended to "never work with children, animals, or tech," uh, because it just it doesn't go wrong. There's, it always goes wrong. Rather, there's a there's an additional statement in um, in filming now for the gadget show, which is um, it worked in the office. That's what, yes. that's what our researchers say all the time. You know, we got it working in the office. Look, I'll ring, I'll ring so and so, and they can they can verify it. And it honestly doesn't matter if it worked in the office. It doesn't matter if it worked during testing or the prototype was one hundred percent effective. When we're trying to film with it, you can pretty much guarantee, as Susie says, about seventy, seventy five, eighty percent of it uh, won't work. No, I've been in so many houses of the future and honestly, never, ne none of them ever work. They're not very smart at all. Um, Tony74, I like this question and you knew that I would personally ask you this question. What was your scariest moment on the gadget show? <laughs> all of them. <laughs> well, as you know, Susie, I, uh, I, I rather fancy myself as, as an actor. Um, so in terms of real fear never 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 happened um but i i guess my best performance um of of fear uh it, do you know what it might have been the zombie one so we were film we were it was night night tech night filming tech and um they made me walk through a maze which was inhabited with zombies and uh you know i mean like zombies the way they Friday look night. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> and these um these zombies were just jumping out from everywhere and uh yes it was it was quite quite terrifying well i remember doing a piece with you too actually one where you had to walk through a haunted house because we were testing i can't remember what we were testing now it sort of went no, out we, the window yeah 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 we, we were using tech to try and create a haunted house is that not it was that not it yes that's right. and the research and, and the was like. that's it we made a haunted house but and yeah. the girl from atomic kitten came and and she wouldn't do it she was so scared she wouldn't, right. go <laughs> she wouldn't go around to make it I had to tell her it was fake again, <laughs> to get her to do the show um but you we as the research we went to somewhere in london and you had to walk through and i was watching you obviously laughing a tiny little bit and you were terrified and when you came out your heart banging that's right and it was honestly i measured your heart rate and it was as if you'd exploded <laughs> i think i think at least three times my heart did yes and the roller coaster yeah. that was also one where you got a little bit scared admit it i think ro roller coaster is more is more just a speed adrenaline thing but passage del terror was genuinely terrifying uh, it, terrifying it was, it was very it was really good wasn't it um, You'll be surprised to hear, actually, Susie, that um, I've never been back. <laughs> Not surprised at all. Uh, Phil Lancaster <laughs> says, your favourite gadget and um, have you still got it? My favourite... Favorite... Actually, one, one of my... I've got a few. One of my favourite bits of tech is, um, is Genius Hub. They used to be called Heat Genius. Uh, now, this is a tech company that's based in Digbeth. And they make smart, uh, well, they don't make smart radiators, but they make a system that allows you to control your heating from uh, a smartphone, from a web browser, or whatever device you've, you've got. So I have uh, smart valves on all of my radiators, and, I'm so and I can me. control... <laughs> well, so you've turned into such a family man, Otis. Well, no, I said that's just that's just one of one. Just let me get started. I'm, I'm, I'm getting warmed up. What else you got? Uh, I've got I've got yeah, I've got a fridge with uh, I've got a smart <laughs> fridge. It's got a screen on it. 
<laughs> what would you expect? I'm a dad of two now. I don't have motorbikes or electric cars or... You've changed. Things. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know. One of the things I, I had was a, a, a kite for surfing. And um, uh -oh. it got... The, uh, you and the producer pinched it. And it was one of my favourite gadgets. It was one of my favourite days filming with John, actually, doing this beach surfing, beach buggy surfing. It was really cool. What's happening there? Oh, is, is that Phoenix? Yeah! Sweet tart, hello, it's Auntie Susie. Say hello. Hello. What hello, darling. Ginger says What happened hello. yesterday? What happened yesterday? It was my birthday. I know it was. How old are you? Four. Yes, happy I birthday. I was four. Did you have fun? Yeah. You're so yeah, tall yeah. now, Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of Phoenix. love. Is mommy okay? Okay, go on, you go back to your desk. You said hello. Go on. <laughs> hmm? You have to go. At least you can see me. Phoenix, can hmm? you blow everybody a kiss? See you later. All right. Bye. See, I don't know. I don't know why it became such a big thing when that uh, reporter went virus. Virus went viral. <laughs> His kid came in the room. Simple. Do you know what I mean? Engage. Turf them out. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the most beautiful. You know, there will be a lot of people at home crying because we're all so desperate for human interaction and oh I'll, yeah, I'll tell you about crying i'll tell you about crying and human interaction and of course you know fully respect and understand the fact that you know you're you're out living in the wilderness with your with your lemons and limes your hogs and your your, your geordies um <laughs> in that order uh my my mum uh came by last week to drop off a food package um and uh i'd been on the phone and she she called um and i messaged her you know I'll, I'll call you back later and then the doorbell went so i went to answer the doorbell and then about you know 10 feet up the up the street was was my mum and i hadn't seen her in the flesh for uh about three weeks because we you know we insisted that they go on on lockdown before um you know before our, our they called it yeah. prime minister was was saying so uh and we we're used to seeing mum every week she comes by and she helps out with with the kids and that was that was horrible because i couldn't i couldn't kiss my mum i couldn't hug her um and in in I, I don't know if it's worse to be actual to to be able to see them and they're within sort of reaching distance and not be able to or just to you know, video call them knowing that they're they're not there. That I think actually having them physically close but not close enough is it is what it was. It was torture. It might actually be worse than mm. you know. Yeah. Um, it's 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 difficult, isn't it, for so many people in so many ways. When my mum was saying to me last night, she said it's all right for you know people your age, but she's my mum's um, seventy seven and my dad's eighty this year, and um, she was saying you know when you when you're older, you don't feel like you can just wait for it all to kind of kick off again next year. You feel like time is a premium, you know, and you want to get out and do things. And she's, she feels <clears throat> really frustrated with the fact that time's ticking away and she's, yeah. and so lots of different experiences. Which yeah, is, yeah. You know, while we're sort of trying to find a bit of light in the dark here and just having, yeah. having a bit of a crack in the and morning. I, and I think, I think it's important. I mean, I love the way that social media has been, um, sort of accosted in a way by lots of individuals and groups and they've they've reimagined a lot of the way they do business yeah. um you know you've got this going on which brings a ray of sunshine into into people's lives on a, on a daily basis uh, for which you're to be saluted um i started something last week on a friday evening where i just want people to grab a drink uh, and chill with me, uh, and you know whether it's firing questions or just letting me know what you're drinking. You know we're, we're doing mates. that. Glass oh mates yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix is having a. Uh, she was due to have a party on Sunday. Fancy dress um, with all her mates around. We can't do that. But the entertainer that we hired has said, well, he'll do a, a Zoom party. 
So he'll have a camera at home, just like you, just like me. And he'll do all the entertainment that he was meant to do, you know, tweaked somewhat for the video interaction. And we've sent a Zoom link to everybody who said they could come to the party. So they'll be able to um, join in and watch it that way. And, we, you know, we wouldn't have conceived of doing a party like that before. And now we're really looking forward to doing something like that. You know, these Zoom parties have, have, have really taken off. If you haven't got shares in Zoom yet, it's not too late. <laughs> and do and you know what as well you won't have to buy everybody a party bag so you'll save money um i'm oh, just kidding <laughs> but here's the thing here's the thing uh, you know gadget show uh, ex gadget show presenter obviously gadget show still kicking on on, cha on channel five and doing doing really well um it is on channel five still right yeah it, it it is on channel five but we're we've been we've been postponed so there's no there's no show at the moment but what we have been doing is a regular news update on thursdays for, for youtube just yeah. trying to keep it going absolutely no, that's a brilliant idea but what i wanted to go back to was when we started the show back in 2004 imagine if we'd have had lockdown then because it would have been very very different because we didn't have any of this technology so first of all yeah. when we started the gadget show when i was telling the geordie lodger this yesterday he said how did you get onto it I said, well, the producer knew me from another show that we'd done, and I went and did a screen test. And I had to talk about the Apple iPod. That's how long ago it was. That There was no phones with touchscreen. There were no uh, apps. There, there was no, I don't even think there was Skype. I mean, there was, there was nothing like this. Um, there was no camera phones. You don't, and we're, only, we're going back, okay, we're going back 16 years, but it's not that long ago when people... You know, I put a picture up and, of course, the bloody cat suit, whatever. Um, but it takes people right back. And you don't have to go back that far to see how far technology has come, consumer technology. And that's, I think, really why my time on The Gadget Show, I, I loved it so much because the, the, the distance that gadget technology came was, was huge in terms of consumerism. You know, it, was, it really was king. The changes were extraordinary. I mean, remember be life before apps? I know, I know. Well, <laughs> I find it difficult to, but every every now and again, I I take out a you know a box of photographs, like physical photographs, and um you know just take a take a trip down memory lane. I think it's it's very easy. Well, before before all of this um, lockdown and coronavirus, etc., I think it's very easy to take uh, tech for for granted um and a lot of it was used for business and um sort of superficial social interaction now um a lot of tech is being used for really vital um social connection and keeping people from just bouncing off the walls mm -hmm. um you know i mean just just before i joined gadget show my girlfriend at the time now wife was living in Australia and we were using Skype to keep in touch and you know this was, you this was this was this was Skype where the camera you had w was you know was only a couple of only a couple of meg now you've got cameras which are HD you've got 8k cameras on on phones you know so you, you were interacting with pixels but you could only do one at a time now you can have parties with three, four, up to, you know, 39 people if you're, if you're using Zoom and really keep that sort of group social interaction going. Uh, and I think the benefit that we had on Gadget Show and, of course, anyone who was tuned in or was a, a, a technophile at the time is, is witnessing the growth of technology and its, and its, its interaction into everyday life. You know, we aren't, we aren't cyborgs, but if you removed the tech from uh, everything that we do nowadays, we would probably really struggle to function normally, almost as though that technology was integrated physically with our, with our bodies. Yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. amazing how every day it is now. I talked to my dad and my mum through installing a Facebook portal recently because... Hang on, I've just hang on. got fed up. Just hang on one second. A Facebook portal. Could you say that, please, George Lodger? Facebook. Facebook portal. So <laughs> you know, uniting the. <laughs> Sorry, I. You know, I got. 
<laughs> I got fed up having conversations with my parents who were in frame like that. No, dad, move the camera. Move it so that we can see you, so we can see your face. Dad, I can't, I can't see you. And what the portal does is it frames on faces. It just um, does it automatically wherever they are in the room. It frames for both of them if they're talking or just one of them if, if not. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks there, um, how, Geordie Houseboy. Um, <laughs> demonstrating there. Um, and, it, and, and again, it's, it's, it's brilliant. You know, 15, 20 years ago, we'd have just had to have a phone conversation and that would have been it. Exactly. I mean, I, it, going back in time, sometimes I think it would be good if we did strip all the gadgets away and just live like we did in the 70s, but not right now, uh, because it's, it's absolutely awesome being able to connect to people. So I take away what I used to think. Uh, Rock Life 365 would like to know, did anybody actually ever win the competition? <laughs> Something, uh, the c competition, obviously legendary and used to annoy us because we had to voice over all the... Um, all the prizes every single week separately. But yes, they did win the competition. And I know- They did. Used to just, they would just eBay the content, what they didn't want really, take what they wanted and eBay the rest of it. That was sort of yeah, the thing, well, wasn't it? What, why wouldn't you? I mean, the, the thing about the, uh, the Gadget Show competition is it's, it was like, uh, or, or it is like uh, the lottery. You know, hundreds of thousands of people entered every week uh, and, and still do. And there can only there can only be one winner. So you know, one in three hundred, four hundred thousand uh, entrants ev every week. It's such a low stat. Of course, it's difficult to believe whether it actually happens or not. Um, but it did, and it, it does. Did. And every time we sent a camera around, exactly. I got insanely jealous. We went round and and filmed it, and um, it, and and actually, uh, the Georgie Lodge is putting his hand in the air because the gadget show, when he was growing up, apparently was one of his favourite shows. And he used to enter the competition every week. In fact, I think he's like some weird late stalker that's <laughs> now lodging at my house. Um, <laughs> but this morning, we played the opening sequence for the very first gadget show where, I don't know whether you remember, but I was doing a bullet time thing that when you look at it now, yeah. at the time, it was so clever. We were so pleased with it. It's on YouTube. Um, but when you look at it, it seems so archaic. Talk about eight megapixels and things like that, being like, wow, it's so yeah. extraordinary. Now we've got them in our phone, yeah. you know, we've got full on camcorders in that with eight megapixels. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It, it, isn't it ridiculous? Um, the, the girls, the gadget show girls, the producers are, are, are all on and they're all watching this. Dion and Jess and um, Misha, they're all sending messages here because we did have, and I'm sure you do have now, just the fantastic production team that research everything get everything together and um you know we just turn up and talk really don't we yeah and we you know we we love them for it um we, we've got again we've got a zoom call this afternoon with with the team that works behind the scenes um and, and i asked for this a couple of days ago because i miss them we would be in the midst of filming right now we do a studio every tuesday um and we do uh two to three films a week for inclusion in in the show they they are a regular regular part of my life um we'll get together this afternoon and and have a chat and a catch up because a lot of them have uh, been either furloughed or aren't aren't working at all um and i just think it's it's very important to keep the lines of communication going and to look out for um for anyone who i'm not i'm not saying that you know anyone on the gadget show team is but it's important just to look out for for those who those who are living on their own um those who might not be coping those who are cope or living with uh older members of the family um i know one or two of the gadget show team had to step back before all of the quarantine stuff became official because they had older members of the family in their household and of course you've got to look after them first right absolutely or the rock and roll generation as i like to call them uh because we have to remember that they are you know uh, super cool and more experienced. They know so much more than, than we do. Um, but yeah, keep, definitely keep an eye on the rock and rollers. A um, couple of quick things before you go, because I'm, I'm sort of looking at the time thinking, oh, we're kind of going over others. I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. Um, but we should, well, we should do a special thing where we do a, an hour later um, in the week, maybe, and have a chat together. But just yep. quickly, obviously, this time of year, we did Gadget Show Live, uh, which was a huge amount of yeah. fun. One of my overriding memories of that with you was the intro that we did, I think, on the second year 
where we flew in <laughs> on an aerial runway. I was wearing the bloody cat suit. You were screaming some song as you sang and we went in. And we flew over the audience of 5,000 people, landing. We did it three times a day. And it was just like being Madonna at a pop concert, wasn't it? It was such fun. It was, it was, it was fantastic. Uh, it was... Um... Uh, if you remember the body form advert where the woman threw herself out of an aeroplane, uh, I sort of repurposed the the, the song for, for Gadget Show. So, <laughs> and um, you you were right. It was it was a really special time in the year for us. It was like Christmas, where up to you know there were hundreds of thousands of people who turned up for Gadget Show Live, uh, full stop. And then the actual show in the Super Theatre, yeah. we'd have up to 15,000 people a day watching us. And we, you made us feel like rock stars. Um, you, made, you know, made us people feel like who we were absolutely, <laughs> yeah, who, people who absolutely loved the show uh, and, and wanted selfies, five minutes of chat, uh, an autograph, remember those? Uh, it was, yeah, and, it was or, or, or just to spend, yeah, or just to spend some time in 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 our company, and and it was it was fantastic to be able to give right back to those of you who kept the show going for so long, and Absolutely. you know they were immensely hard work, but I miss them. And by entering the competition, you actually kept the show going because that was the money that you know allowed us to to make the programs <laughs> effectively. To be yeah. honest about it, pretty um, much. It, in rehearsal for the Gadget Show Live, by the way, when we were coming in on those, I remember uh, we were playing uh, Kings of Leon and he was he was singing, instead of Sex on Fire, you were singing Your your Gadget on Fire, which I think, Gadget, no, yeah. I can reveal to the nation now, uh, the real Otis Steeler. One of my favourite challenges that you did, and um, I'm sorry, oh, Mary Whitehouse will be on in a minute, that's my mum. So one of my favourite challenges that you did, and I thought you were just absolutely brilliant, um, was when you learnt, you had to learn to fly using a simulator and then you had to fly a plane and you bloody did it. <gasps> oh, you made me cry. I thought I was so proud of you. Well, I didn't really have much of a choice in no, that. I, know that. Um, <laughs> I was, I was told I'm doing it. And two, I had, I couldn't fail because it would mean imminent death in a, in, in a, in a fireball. Um, but yes, one of the most amazing challenges I did, I had six weeks um using a, a a plane sim a flight simulator and this is this work we're going back what maybe about 10 11 years now yeah. um so just using a flight simulator six weeks um and uh i was allowed to sit in one of british airways official uh simulators um which their pilots do all their hours on and and this bit of tech was so sophisticated that pilots could do all of their training on that and then go on to flying the real thing. So this was a challenge similar to what pilots go through. And then um, sat in a plane with a very nervous uh, co-pilot uh, flight instructor. And what I had to do was taxi out along the runway, take off, fly a short circuit, and then land the thing. And the, the landing aspect is always difficult, especially if you've got um, a crosswind, which fortunately we didn't have that day. Um, but, you know, with all the instruments going and uh, trying to take care of your rudders and your... Well, you had a band in there with you as well. I'm trying to, trying to think, was there a camera crew in there? You I don't think any of the camera... In there. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't brave enough to, to, to come up or the insurance wouldn't cover it. Um, but when I, when I landed that plane, what, when, you're, when you're in flight, it's, it's, you, you, you relax. That's the easiest part, is to take off and the landing. And the, the landing represented one of the squeakiest bum times of of my whole life let alone career uh more so than passage del terra um, <laughs> it was incredible and, and, to watch and um yeah. just a, just a great feat i mean we did some amazing things i remember you singing with the lovely beverly knight doing some sort of karaoke thing and and i did some incredible things as well flying in loads of different planes night vision goggles with the raf and designing an app that Wearing got three and a half million downloads. You know, it, it was just really, there was such such good times. And I hope that you guys are continuing to, to have amazing times like that. Yeah, we are. We're still, we're still uh, doing our best to, to make memories and to keep the show enter uh, entertaining. It's changed a lot. Um, and I, I guess the show, the show has to, and, 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 and it will as, personalities come and and go you know side by side it's a 
it's a different show now. The, the dynamic is different, let me say. I mean, we still report on tech. We still do uh, stupid stuff. We don't risk the lives of the presenters as wantonly as uh, as we used to. But that's because the average age of, of the presenter is is now about 70. Hey, listen, <laughs> I'm broken from that show. I'm, I'm, I've got, still got broken bits all over me from falling this, off this very I know. different things. This I know crashing and being jason you know knocking me off bikes and this that and the other um but but what um what what an extraordinary experience it was really and it's it's absolutely lovely to speak to you. i'm sure there's a million um messages that i haven't read out today uh, but so i hope you've enjoyed listening to otis and i reminisce basically uh so just, just so many so many things keep popping up into my head to to ask you about and just uh, not enough time so let's do this again absolutely yeah yeah i'll be, I'll be more than happy to okay excellent. what else am i doing oh, well, no quite well yeah quite. <laughs> oh we, we should talk about uh we should talk about the world records that got broken we should talk about those day challenges that we used to do where we didn't know what we would be doing in the day and we had to keep on opening envelopes they were always absolutely hilarious yeah yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it, it was good times. Anyway, uh, still going on Channel 5, Gadget Show, on YouTube at the moment until obviously they get back yeah. to work. Um, Otis Dealey, it's always a total joy and a pleasure. Love you loads. You're an inspiration. Likewise. Likewise. Stay safe. Uh, Geordie Houseboy, please look after my, my mate. Um, look forward to meeting you soon. Um, it's not yeah, great, it's just a voice. Forward... <laughs> <laughs> what are the gadgets? It's AI, isn't it? It's to be up. Someone has sent you AI. Yeah. It's AI. I wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love to you and the family. Big kiss to Rachel. Thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate Likewise. it. Likewise. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks bye -bye. for watching, everyone. Really appreciate it. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, that is absolutely stonking to speak to Otis. And um, I know we've gone a bit longer than we would normally, but I just <laughs> didn't want to stop talking to him. I guess you, you know, that's. That's just where we are at the moment in the world, isn't it? Wanting to have that interaction and reminisce. I'm sure um, you've been doing a lot of that as well. There's loads of questions. I will endeavour to try and get back to you. Um, Christian Horner, good morning, the head of Red Bull Formula One team. How are you? Uh, very nice uh, to see that you've popped on and, uh, and said hi. Um, I, I will try to reply to a lot of you today. I will do shout outs to those that I've missed tomorrow it's friday tomorrow we're thinking we might do something a bit different i'm not sure we might do it from the kitchen and i might cook some pancakes let's see <laughs> of all it's the challenges i've done on the gadget show surely you can just do that here's the first rose of the summer i've picked that for you guys can i just give a quick shout out to narina Palo, who does a beautiful live streaming session tonight on youtube it's called hold tight she's gorgeous she's talented i love listening to her thought i'd share that with you send me any news 